Welcome to Praise Life from Hope Side. This is the time where we can sing and praise God's name. May we all join in singing. For the first song, let's sing, He's Everything to Me. He's Everything to Me. In the stars, His handiwork I see. On the wind, He speaks with majesty. Though He ruleth over land and sea, what is that? song that we sing from when we were small children right at home into my heart into my heart come into my heart Lord Jesus come in today come in to stay come into my heart Lord Jesus let's keep our hearts in prayer as we sing the song into my heart
Hope Site Community Church extends a hearty welcome to all those who are present here today. It's a beautiful weather, although it's hot and humid outside, but we are still thankful that God has been with us during the past days. First time visitors are welcome. Yes, um, I'd like to welcome Sid who is here with us this Sabbath. Um, he's coming from where? From, from Washington State. Okay, he's joining us from Washington State. And please feel at home. As you are coming here for the first time, you can sign in our guest book as well. Please visit our website as often as possible. We, we can send you every week um, emails so also give your email ad addresses this week we are glad to have um, mr peterson here with us he's going to give us um, the message today the second week of any month is focused on health matters here's a quote that reflects on his theme we are what we repeatedly eat Healthy eating is not an act, but a habit. It's by Felicity Lucky. So we are what we eat repeatedly. So what are we eating? That's something to reflect on. Prophecy Live is every Saturday at 3 p.m. You can join us through Zoom or uh, you can watch it on YouTube. You can also check prophecylive.org for more information. You can participate in most Hope Site services by Zoom. The information about the Zoom links are given on the website. Women's Bible study is every Saturday at 4 p.m. And now we are looking into Genesis. So if you'd like to join, please join. I'll be leading. Pray fasting is every Tuesday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. WhatsApp group name is Pray Fasting if you'd like to join. This is to pray mainly for our building project and any other prayer request. You can fast and pray as you prefer between 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. every Tuesday. Is there any other announcement that has to be made? If not, you're all welcome for a luncheon after the divine service. For our opening song, let's all join our voices in singing, Jesus, what a wonder you are. Let's all rise as we sing. Jesus, what a wonder you are. Jesus is so gentle and so kind, isn't it? That's why we always want to go back to him. Jesus shines like morning star. Oh Jesus, what a wonder you are. Let's join the voices in singing, Jesus, what a wonder you are.
I see Mirab here. I'd like to welcome you, Mirab. How are you? Happy Sabbath to you. Thank you for joining us, Mirab. Yes, uh, good to see you. Thank you for joining us and may God be with you and your family as you worship with us. Thank you for being here. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 and it reads, I urge that first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for king and all those in authority, that we may live peacefully and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. With these words, I would like to invite each one of you to present your Praise report and your prayer request. I would like to thank God for his goodness and the mercy all through my week and for the church family I meet to be comfortable. And I praise God that God is keeping them all hale and healthy and I can see them every week. And my request is, pray for Lakshmi, that is one thing. And yesterday there was a disaster. My neighbor, I, I, I just went to sleep around the 11.30 and I was you know, tumbling in the bed. And I just got to sleep by around 12.30. My, uh, my sister, she just knocked my door and she woke up. Nani, Nani, get up, get up, get up, there's fire outside. And lo and behold, we all rushed out of the house to see our neighbor's house in blaze. It was a big fire. I was the first time I looked at the fire really burning down a house. And actually I said, how did you know? I, then she told me that there was crackling, you know, of uh, glass breaking with the fire. I said, who is breaking at this hour of the day? She peeped to see there was fire. But then after uh, our five minutes, the uh, fire brigade came and then uh, they put down the fire. It was a huge loss for the family, and uh, and we stayed up to up to two to thirty to to see what the situation was. You know, the firefighters were fighting the big fire, and uh, I was feeling so sad. And uh, I don't know what all he did he lost did he lose, but I know the whole. I think the whole the living room, the kitchen was in place. I don't know what all, I think they had, they, were, they had an adjacent room also that was also smoking and I did not know whether the fire passed there. But then after when the fire was doused, I did see it was a huge damage. Please pray for the family to recover. Yes, we have to pray for the family. Please continue praying for my sons, Michael and Nathaniel, for their spiritual growth. This is a prayer request. My brother is just appointed as a principal of her secondary school as Spicer. And uh, we are family we want to request that uh, please pray for God to give him needed health, strength, courage, and wisdom, and understanding as he's uh, moving on with the board. May I ask his name? Moses. 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 All right. Okay. Last week I prayed, I... Last week I requested prayer, prayer for my uncle, Yohanan. He sadly passed away. Please remember my sister-in-law's family, Daisy's family in prayer and my brother. And uh, my three children, and I thank God for everything. And um, unspoken request.
Please remember Robert Wesley. He is uh, the host of Prophecy Live, which uh, is recorded and played every Saturday. Uh, his uh, wife said he's admitted to the hospital for, for some unspecified condition. Nothing serious, but nevertheless, uh, please remember the host of Prophecy Live. That's our own uh, Robert Wesley. He's my childhood friend. He came here first week of uh, February from England, and he preached, as you all know. So remember Robert Wesley. And also Mohan Jodi, if you can remember all these names. He's my childhood friend, too. His organs have failed, and he's intubated. He's in the hospital. He's right here. A very feisty kind of a guy. Uh, and uh, but he's now fighting for his life. Mohan Jali and uh, Robert Wesley. I would like to uh, present another prayer of request. Yesterday I was watching a documentary on Celine Dion. Uh, she is really under ha having a lot of pain in her life. She's not able to sing and she has a rare disease, she said, that she has one in a million. Now she has stiff person syndrome. And yesterday they did show how stiff she became and she was on the, uh, on the verge of collapsing. She was collapsing and they did give her medication. You know, she became like a stick and people had to revive her, you know, back. And it is really a very sad thing to, uh, to see her. And she's still alive. Let's pray for her so that she, God may heal her. Yes. So this, the second week of this month is focused on health matters and it is very important that as a, as a verse that I read also says that you have to pray for and within your petition, in your supplication, in your thanksgiving for the community. So let us pray for the health of our community, for all the workers and the people who are suffering. Like we, it's very sad to hear that some of them are badly for their lives. That is really sad. At the same time, let us also give thanks to the Lord for giving us good health. Because no matter how much we work or how much we earn, no one, nothing can revive, you know, health, unless it is the mercy of God. Amen. So let us always keep that in our prayer. With that said, are there any other praise report or prayer request? If not, I request you to kneel with me wherever is possible to seek the Lord. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we come to thee humbly into thy presence. We, we praise thee, Father, for all the goodness and mercy and grace that you have bestowed upon your children and to this community and to everyone around the world. The whole world should praise the Father for all that you have done. We are so fortunate as believers, as a small group that we are worshiping you. Father, sinners as we are, we come before thee humbly at the feet of the cross to place our praise report and our prayer request. We, we praise Thee that Sister Nalini has said, has testified that she is able to see all the church members and that You have been so good to her despite all the challenges that she had been facing. Father in heaven, may You continue to be with Your daughter so that she would grow and continue to trust in You and to always remember that you have not forsaken her. We pray for Amudanti as her sister-in-law's father had passed away. Father, we pray for the sister-in-law and all the other family members related to her, to Sister Daisy, that you would comfort them and that they would find solace in you. As, as, as the day goes by, let them have this faith that one day they will see their father again when you come down the clouds of heaven. We pray for Mary Auntie's brother, Moses, as he is appointed as a principal in, in a school.
Father in heaven, may you give him wisdom and understanding from above and the strength that would help, that would assist him in making major decisions for the school and for any other issue that come up and also to guide all the faculty members in that school. We are living in the last days and anything can happen. May you be with your son Moses as, and fill him with your spirit and help him to seek you for counsel when making jala, when making decisions. We also pray for two of uh, Anand's friend as uh, one person is in the hospital for an un identified illness. We pray, Father, that you would heal him, heal your servant, as this person has been serving you as a host of Prophecy Life. We pray that you would be with him and his family, and may they continue to have faith in thee, and continue to do ministry for thee. We also pray for the other friend who is battling for his life. It's quite unfortunate that something as a health issue has occurred and now he's in the hospital. We pray that you have mercy on your son and be with all the caretakers who are tending to his needs, who are nurturing him. We pray that he will make a speedy recovery and one day testify your goodness. We also pray for the singer Celine Dion as we have learned that she too is suffering. She's also a human Lord and she's also a child who needs your mercy and grace. Father, the whole world is in need of you, Father. We pray for her especially. May you be with her and with her family and with her life. May you continue to be with her and heal her. Even if she doesn't make a speedy recovery, but then for her to keep moving on all this time is purely your mercy, Father. Father, there are we also pray for Amadanti's children as they are living their lives. We pray that they would find the right partner and that they would continue to give their life for thee. We also pray for Sonia and his uh, kids. We pray that you would, for Michael and Nathaniel, we pray that you would be with them and protect them from all harms and danger. There are many more unspoken request and praise report that we are not aware of. But either ways, we submit them all at thy feet. Be with the speaker of the yard, fill him with your Holy Spirit as he breaks the bread of life, and help us to hear thy servant speak. Please forgive us of all our sins and our shortcomings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. continuation of our worship. Now we come in the presence of the Lord with all that we have. We let's give our Lord all that we have. Everything that is belongs to us belongs to the Lord, isn't it? We are, yesterday I really did, uh, um, uh, did experience. No matter what you earn and what you do, this fire put down everything in a minute. Everything was gone. He never even dreamt in his life, the thought in his wildest dreams that his house will be on fire. And it was late night. And we, uh, when it was everybody who was going to sleep at that time, the fire had just gone up. And I was just thinking, what if nobody came to the rescue and nobody done? The whole house would have gone. Of course, the, the, now the portion of the house was burned down that he can prepare that you know there was a very sad thing that his wife was not able to move out run out quickly she was on a walker so you see how god was gracious to you know pull her out of the fire so we are indebted to god to whatever we have it's not that i have earned and i have the pleasure that i have earned and, I, and it is mine it is all the lord's so let us have that fear of the God in our hearts and give him all that is required 
and with that we we realize this is our Sabbath mission in giving. People will recognize that we are children of God and our mission will grow to, uh, to enhance His coming. May we all pray that the Lord will come soon and deliver us from all the sickness and trouble that we have in this world. Do we all not desire that God come soon? Yeah. Yes, so we all desire. Even morning I was saying, when Pastor Jeffrey was telling me about all the crises that are happening, I said, Lord, please come so. Let us not experience all this. And if it is your will, we have to give me the strength to go through this situation. Okay, that is all my prayer is. And let's pray for the offering. Gracious Almighty Father, Lord, we thank you for being with us and blessing us for the past week. Thank you for keeping us safe and sound. Thank you for keeping us safe as an apple of your eye. Thank you, Lord, for all the manifold blessings. Though we don't deserve them, but you are still giving us. Thank you for your faithfulness, O oh Lord. Now we come with the offering. Lord, I pray that this offering that we present before thee will be multiplied like the two fish and the five loaves, Lord. And let it be used for the furtherance of your cause. Let every member of this planet know that you are the only true living God. That, and you are in control of the situation. Mighty God, we pray that this mission that we have in our hearts, let it go forward to hasten your coming. In Jesus' righteous name I pray. Amen. 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 Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. It's a tradition in Hopeside Church. Every week we focus on something. So second week is focused on health matters. And if wealth is lost, nothing is lost. If health is lost, everything is lost. Being an essential care worker or health care worker, every day I see death, dying, sick. We nurse them back to health. Some of them don't make it. And as you talked about the stiff um, busy person, person I had seen it all, worked with them. So when I nurse a patient, I always remember that God is watching and I have to do the best of my ability to take care of each patient that is being given to me for that period of time, for 12 hours. One of my um, managers said, if we step one step further, we could be in that position as a patient. But God, whom we worship today, is very gracious, long-suffering, kind to each one of us. We are breathing, we have a heart beating, our mind in sound mind, and we can worship. So let's be thankful to God every day, every minute. I need the every hour, how much we sing that song. With that being said, today's scripture reading is found in John 19, 28 to 30. We'll read alternatively. I'll read the first and we'll read the all of them the second. And then when it comes to the last, 
we all will join in unison and reading the scripture. Today's scripture reading is found in John 19, 28 to 30. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst all. Now there was a set of full of vinegar, vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. All of us. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Let's sing a theme song. Now, dear Lord, as we pray, take our hearts and mind far away from the press of the world all around to your throne where grace does abound. May our hearts be close to God and ask God to rescue us from the press of the world. The press of the world is heavy on us and it's a burden that we need to bear as long as we are on this earth. So maybe submit our lives to God. theology and uh, so I made a, a pact with God kind of like William Miller when uh, he says okay Lord, Lord I will preach if someone calls me to huh. preach and uh, in 15 minutes his nephew was at the door and said hey we need someone to preach and so even though 
I don't always feel comfortable up front. I've taken the attitude of William Miller that if called. So last week I thought to myself, you know, Jeffrey's been after me to preach. Keeps asking me, and I keep on saying no, no. And so I said to myself, if he says, again, you preach, I'll preach. The first thing he says, so when are you going to preach? <laughs> anyway, so um, I want to paint you a picture of, let's get this thing going here. And so I'm, I'm using PowerPoint to kind of keep you your attention and perhaps to, to uh, show a picture of what I'm trying to get across. As Jesus met with his disciples um, in the upper room um, and ate the Last Supper, time was running out for Jesus. In less than 24 hours, Christ would die on the cross. For us Gentiles, this would have been Thursday evening. But for the Jews, it was the evening of the following day, Friday. You probably remember that in the book of Genesis, when Jesus created the world, that the evening and the morning was the first day. And therefore, according to, to the Jews, Jesus was eating the Passover supper with his disciples on the same day that he would die on the cross as our Passover lamb. Jesus had a lot to tell his disciples before his death, especially to the 11 after Judas would leave the upper room. But there was a problem. The problem was that his disciples were still in the who should be the greatest in the kingdom mode. And that is why Judas made sure that he had the best position at the Passover table next to Jesus. And to be fair, John had the same idea. And therefore, Judas was made sure that he was on the left side of Jesus, and John made sure that he was on the right. The Passover feast was instituted when the children of Israel left Egypt. It was part of the 10th plague by following Moses' instruction, the children of Israel should be ex example, exempt from the effects of the 10th plague. And ever since then, year after year, for centuries, the Israelites have kept the Passover feast, which was to do two things. Number one, point God's people back to their deliverance from Egypt and slavery, which was um, and number two, at the same time, to point them forward to the coming of the Messiah, his death on the cross, the true deliverance from the slavery of sin. Now, when the children of Israel left Egypt, they were to eat the Passover meal. While standing, the Bible says, with their loins girded up, ready to leave, but once they were in the promised land, they were to eat it laying down. And thus, when Jesus and his disciples ate the Passover meal, they were reclined on couches around a table, resting on their left arm, leaving their right arm, uh, right hand free for eating. In this position, a guest could lay his head upon the chest of the one who sat to their left. Therefore, Jesus laid his head on the chest of Judas. And John rested his head on the chest of Jesus. Can you imagine John listening to the heartbeat of Jesus? Now Jesus had a lot on his mind, for there were many things that he wanted to tell his disciples before his death. One of which was, his re was this reoccurring problem of who was to be the greatest in the kingdom. The book Desire of Ages indicates that the ten disciples were still upset with James and John for getting their mother to, involved in asking that they be on the left and the right hand of Jesus when he came in his kingdom. And so when there was no one to perform the duty of foot washing, they all stood back to see who would act their part of servant. Thus Christ ends up washing 
the feet of the, the, of the disciples to show how they should be like him, that is, serving rather than being served. After Christ washed the feet of, of his disciples, the Zion of Ages says Christ was standing at the point of transition between two great festivals. The Passover service, which they were participating in, was to come to an end forever. Its purpose since the time of Moses was to point the people to the Messiah's death, the true Passover lamb. And since Christ was about to die, its observance was no longer necessary. And the new service that Christ established, which we call the communion service, was to be observed by his followers in all the lands and through all ages. This would literally be the last meal that Christ would eat before his crucifixion and perhaps even his last drink. The communion service, like the Passover service, would have two functions. First, to point back to Christ's death on the cross for the deliverance of our sins, but it was also to point forward to his second coming. And thus, Jesus says to his disciples, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. The communion service, like the Passover, was to keep Jesus' great work for us fresh in our minds. And thus Jesus says, as often as you eat, do this and remember of me. It was during the Passover meal that Jesus announced that one of them was going to betray him. And when Judas was asked with the others, is it I, Master? Jesus answered, you have said so. And then these parting words, what you are going to do, do quickly. If you would like to read along with me, I'll be in chapter 13 of the book of John, verses 31. So Judas finally leaves. Desire of Ages says, Judas had left the upper chamber and Christ was alone with his eleven. The impression is given that Jesus is, was waiting for this moment so that he could draw the remaining eleven disciples closer to him. I imagine Jesus physically drawing his disciples close to him and almost in a whisper and yet with urgency in his voice because time was short, saying to the remaining disciples, Verse 33, little children, yet a little while and I am with you. And where I'm going, you cannot come. And a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you. Peter, wanting Jesus to slow down, asked, where are you going? In verse 36, notice that Peter didn't hear the part about loving one another. Jesus says, where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but afterward. Peter, not satisfied with Jesus' answer, asks, Why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. And Jesus answered in verse 38, Will you lay down your life for me? Truly, truly, I say to you, the cock will not crow till you have denied me three times. Now the disciples seem troubled and confused. So Jesus tries to comfort them. And in John chapter 14, that famous text, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to where I'm going. Thomas, still trying to grasp Jesus' words five verses back in the book of John, speaks up verse 5 of chapter 14. Lord, we do not know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus say, says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Philip figures he knows how to clear up the whole problem by saying in verse 8, Lord, show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. Jesus says, have I been with you so long, and yet you do not know me, Philip? He who, said, who, he who has seen me has seen the Father, and how can you say, show us the Father? So you get the picture. 
Jesus is trying to cram all the information he can into the minds of his remaining 11 disciples so that they will be able to carry on his legacy and at the same time not be bewildered by his death. From the upper room, they go to the Garden of Gethsemane where Judas will betray him with a kiss. Once Jesus enters the garden, his words are few. To his disciples, he simply says, watch and pray. To his Father in heaven, three times he pleads, if at all possible, allow this cup to pass from me. And then finally, my, God, my Father, if this cup cannot pass unless I drink it, thy will be done. The next nine hours, of Jesus' life are summarized in these words from the book Desire of Ages. O oh, fearful scene, the Savior seized at midnight in Gethsemane, dragged to and fro from palace to judgment hall, arraigned twice before uh, priests, twice before the Sanhedrin, twice before Pilate, and once before Herod. Mocked, scourged, condemned, and led out to be crucified, bearing a heavy burden of the cross amid the wailing of the daughters of Jerusalem and the jeering of the rabble. During these nine hours from midnight Thursday night to nine o'clock Friday morning, Jesus says very little. At nine, um, at 9 a.m., Jesus is finally lifted up on the cross and would hang there for the next six hours. In Roman time, this was the third hour. Their day started at six in the morning. After hanging on the cross for three hours, darkness covered the earth. But before the darkness covers the earth, the gospel reports the following words from Jesus. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And when the thief on the cross asked Jesus, remember me, when you come in your kingdom, Jesus responds with these words. Truly, truly, I say unto you, you will be with me in paradise. The Gospel of Matthew says, now from the sixth hour, which is 12 noon, there was darkness over all of the land until the ninth hour, which was 3 hour 3 p.m. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Then Matthew ends with these words, And Jesus cried again, and with a loud voice, he yielded up his spirit. The Gospel of Mark is identical to Matthew's Gospel. Luke's Gospel, on the other hand, ends with Jesus' words, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit and he breathed his last. John's Gospel first tells of his own encounter with Jesus at the foot of the cross when Jesus says to him, Woman, behold your son. And then to him, John, behold your mother. But later, in verse 28, John says, After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill scripture, I thirst. And then in verse 30, it all ends with these words. Jesus, when Jesus had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. The book Desire of Ages summarizes Jesus' words in this order. The author has Jesus saying, it is finished. And then before he dies, Jesus says, into thy hands I commit my spirit. When I close my eyes and I envision that moment, I imagine Jesus' voice echoing throughout all the universe. It is finished, 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 finished. And in my thinking, this cataclysmic event of Christ's death on the cross with these final words, it is finished, became and will always be the pivotal point of the entire universe for the rest of eternity. So if this is the cataclysmic event of the universe for all time, what was finished? When Christ said those words just before he died on the cross. In order to explain this, 
there's a saying we have, sometimes you can't see the forest because of the trees. In other words, you're too close. And so I want to pan out, way out, to the beginning. I want to pan up to this pivotal point in history of the universe so that we can see the beginning to the end of this great controversy that started in heaven. The book Desire of Ages has a full chapter entitled It Is Finished, and it starts out by saying Christ did not yield up his life until he had accomplished the work which he came to do. So what was it that Christ came to do? The work that Christ came to do was to finish what Satan had started back in the Garden of Gethsemane, if not before then, when he tempted Adam and Eve to sin. Notice what Genesis 3.15 says, because you, Satan, have done this, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. He shall bruise your head as when God finally destroys Satan in hell. And you shall bruise his heel is Satan uh, part in the death of Christ on the cross. In the last chapter of the book Desire of Ages, the author says these words. Before the foundation of the earth were laid, the Father and Son had united in a covenant to redeem man if he should be overcome by Satan. They had clasped their hands in a solemn pledge that Christ should become the surety for the human race. This pledge Christ has fulfilled. When he was upon the cross, he cried out, it is finished. He addressed the Father. The compact had been fully carried out. Now he declares, Father, it is finished. I have done thy will, O oh my God. For the angels, also from the book Desire of Ages, and the unfallen worlds, the cry, it is finished, had deep significance also. It was for them as well as for us that the great work of redemption had been accomplished. But for Satan, it is finished was his death knell. When Christ declared it is finished, Satan saw that his disguise was now torn away. His administration was laid open before the unfallen angels and before the heavenly universe. And now his work was restricted. He was cast down to the earth. Revelation 12, 12 says, For the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that his time is short. But the interesting thing is that Satan was not destroyed then. And the natural question is, is why not? Wasn't it over? Wasn't it finished? The reason given is that the angels did not still fully understand all that was involved in the great controversy when Jesus died on the cross. There was more to Satan's rebellion, and these principles were to be more fully revealed. Man, as well as angels, must see the contrast between Christ and Satan. And in the end, man must choose whom he will serve. So what was to be more fully re revealed? In order to answer that question, we need to go back in time to when Lucifer first sinned. At the beginning, before Lucifer sinned, Lucifer had been created perfect. He held the highest, most honored position of all created beings in the universe. It wasn't until Lucifer chose to indulge in the desire of self-exaltation that sin was found in him. And his name was changed from Lucifer to Satan. The scriptures say, thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Um, thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness, Ezekiel 28, 17. And in Isaiah 14, 13 and 14, thou hast said in thy heart, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, and I will be like the Most High. Even though all of Lucifer's glory was from God, this mighty angel came to regard it as pertaining to himself. This is what led him to not be content with his position, though honored above the heavenly host, 
he now coveted the homage due alone to Christ. Even though God the Father showed Lucifer that he was in the wrong, and Lucifer even admitted that the law of gods are just, it says his pride got in the way. In his mind, it was too great a sacrifice for one who had been so highly honored to confess that he had been in error, that his Im imaginings were false, and to yield to the authority which he had been working to prove unjust. And because he could not give up this pride, Lucifer, the light bearer, became Satan, the adversary. The I see this, this, uh, the rebellion of, of Lucifer in um, four steps. The first stage of his rebellion um, was Satan's desire for self-exaltation, which we already talked about. I believe that there was a progression in this rebellion. The second stage of Satan's rebellion was his attack on God's government, that he could, that, uh, claiming that he could improve it. Let me give you an example from teaching experience at school. This is like when my students ask me, why can't we do this or why can't we wear that? And when I point out because it is a school rule, they say, well, that's a stupid rule. <laughs> In other words, if you don't like the way something turned out, you say it is stupid. That's taking the focus off you being wrong to the rule being wrong. This is what Lucifer, now Satan, begins to do. He insinuates doubts concerning the laws that govern the heavenly beings. He says the laws might be necessary for the inhabitants of the world, but angels, being more exalted, they need no such restraint, that their own wisdom was sufficient guide. And therefore, it was impossible for angels to bring dishonor to God. He argued that all their thoughts were holy and that it was not no more possible for them to err than for God himself. This is what my students would say, okay, those rules are probably good for the, uh, the grade school kids, but we're high school students. We're smarter than them, more mature. Some of us can even drive and even vote in a few years. Satan was determined to claim the honor which he thought should have been given to him and take command of all who would become his followers. And therefore, he pointed, he promised those who would enter his ranks a new and better government under which all would enjoy ultimate freedom. Since Satan claimed that, this ob that, that his only object was to improve the laws of God, therefore God permitted him to demonstrate the nature of his claims, to show the working out of his purposes, to change the divine law. His own work must condemn him. Satan had claimed from the first that he was not in rebellion. Therefore, the whole universe must see the deceiver unmasked. So to sum up the second stage of Satan's rebellion, I'm not discontent. The rules are stupid. I just want to fix them. The third stage was to do, has to do with man. Satan's rebellion after the creation of Adam and Eve boiled down to two main concepts. The first was that the law of God could not be obeyed. So when Adam and Eve sinned, Satan was ecstatic. He said that this proves that God's laws needed improvement because they could not be obeyed. And the second was that God could not be a just God and a merciful God at the same time. In other words, if someone was to break God's law, that person could not be forgiven but must die and therefore, if God were a just God, he would not forgive Adam and Eve's sin. Satan pointed to his own banishment from heaven for his rebellion as an example as to why the human race must also be forever shut out of God's favor. But here is the key uh, from the desire of ages. It says, but even as a sinner, man was in a different position from that of Satan. Lucifer in heaven had sinned in the light of God's glory. To him, as to no other creature, 
created being was given the, rele, rele, the revelation of God's love. Understanding the character of God, knowing his goodness, Satan chose to follow his own selfishness, his own independent will. This choice was final. There was no more that God could do to save him. But man was deceived. His mind was darkened by Satan's sophistry. The height and depth of the love of God did not know. For him there was hope in the knowledge of God's love. By beholding his character, he might be drawn back to God. Therefore, man was given a second chance. So to review, Satan's rebellious progression. Number one, it all started with the desire for self-exaltation. I will be like the Most High God. Number two, I'm not in rebellion. I just want to improve upon God's government and give ultimate freedom. Number three, the problem with God's government is that the law cannot be kept and God cannot be just and merciful at the same time. Christ's death on the cross proved all these rebellious ideas wrong. And therefore, Jesus could say on the cross, it is finished. But interestingly, there is one more stage in Satan's rebellion. Even though Christ had already died on the cross and cried out, it is finished, there is still one more stage. Desire of Ages points it out. It says, another deception was now to be brought forth um, forward, Satan declared that God's mercy destroyed his justice and that the death of Christ now abrogated or changed the Father's law. So here's an interesting thought. Before Christ's death on the cross, you don't hear anything about changing the law. It wasn't until Christ's death on the cross that Satan is saying, Okay, this changes everything. Your mercy has dest destroyed justice. But notice this. Had it been possible for the law of God to be changed or abrogated, then Christ need not have died on the cross. It was because the law was changed less, because man could be saved only through obedience to his precepts that Jesus was lifted up on the cross. This last claim of Satan's will be the last conflict of the great controversy between Christ and Satan. Ever since Christ's death on the cross, Satan now claims that God's mercy changed the Father's laws. He claimed that the law, that is the Ten Commandments, which he spoke with his own voice and wrote with his own figure, is faulty. This is what Daniel was talking about when he said in Daniel 7.25, he, referring to Satan, shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change the times and laws. This is God's law that he wants to change and place it with man's law. This is the seventh day Sabbath of the fourth commandment versus man's Sunday. God did not change his law. Remember Jesus' words, if it uh, is possible, allow this cup to pass from me. But Christ ended up dying for man's redemption. My Father, if this cup cannot pass unless I drink it, thy will be done. The war against God's law, which was begun in heaven, will continue until the end of time. Every man will be tested, obedience or disobedience is the question to be decided by the whole world. All will be called to choose between the law of God and the laws of men. Here the dividing line will be drawn. There will be two, but two classes in the end. And at that time, every character will be fully developed and all will show whether they have chosen the side of loyalty or that of rebellion. Yes, it is finished. Christ has paid the penalty for our sins that we might be justified. But now it is our turn. There is something we must do. We must choose. We must first choose Jesus as our Savior, and then we must choose to serve Him. 
You must choose whose side you are on. So if you have chosen Christ as your Savior, I implore you to now choose to serve him, no matter what the cost. Amen. Amen. Brother Peterson for the beautiful message. Um, it is finished. I never thought in depth about the words. It is finished. And uh, he also brought out uh, an example of the Passover uh, where the people were ready to leave. They were eating their bread uh, with their lions girded down like ready to leave. So even as we are on this earth, we should not feel so comfortable in this earth. We have to be ready to leave. And thank you so much for bringing out the uh, uh, four points about the rebellion of Lucifer, um, so that we will be, we will understand what was finished, and we will always be choosing Christ, and we will serve Christ. Thank you for this message. In closing, let's all join our voices in singing the song, How Great Thou Art. God is an awesome God. He is the creator of the whole universe. Who else should we worship other than God? Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hand has made. Let's all rise as we sing the song. Let's join the voices in singing the song, How Great Thou Art. God is a mighty God and there is none besides Him. Amen. Amen.
how great thou art. We count it a privilege to call you our Father. We want to thank you for sending your Son to die for each one of us. And in doing that, showing the love that you had for us, that your law is a benefit for us. It's a loving law. We ask, Lord, as we live in these last days, that we may always be faithful, to stand up for what is right and what is true, to realize that there's going to be one last battle over worship. Is it Saturday, the Sabbath, or is it Sunday? May we each one hold true to the end is our prayer today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Once again, happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Uh, thank you, Brother Peter and uh, Sister Elizabeth, who will be a part of Oakside Church. Thank you for acknowledging and being a part of us, and especially serving us with God's Word. I am truly humbled to have a man like uh, Brother Peter Hardy, the first time that I saw him. I know Brother Peter Hardy because of my sister. Okay, they do attend Wood River Church. Okay, uh, Oregon, Portland, right? Hood River. Okay, yeah, Wood River. And uh, my sister attends there. And uh, that's the way how I came to know Brother Peter. And uh, my sister has always, uh, uh, you know, talking something, what the Lord has been able to do there in Wood River. Uh, she always said, Pastor Clem, well, Brother Peter has to speak to your church if you have an opportunity because uh, his messages are so beautifully touches your heart. Amen. And I always believe one thing, the same message most probably uh, he would have given back to me. I would have been so grateful that I could preach the same sermon again in a different angle altogether. I hope that uh, Pastor uh, Brother Peter would be uh, my sermon writer, you know, I truly be honored. Okay, your message today. Thank you very much for that insight. You know, he served as a teacher for 43 long years. Wow. And he has three <laughs> children and 11 grandchildren. 11. And uh, he's been so much being blessed in every angle. Very humble, very simple. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you people think about. The first time that I met him in his father's place, you know, the first thing that he told is there was a huge, you know, basement there. Very beautiful. He said, I want to give this to you, you can stay, he said. Mm -hmm. I can never forget that. I can never forget that. Humble, generous, and a very good Adventist. Very happy that we as Hopeside Church to know you, sir. God be with you in whatever possible in good river. May the Lord be able to use you mightily. That's my prayer for you. Okay. Amen. Amen. He'll be traveling, okay, most probably within uh, two, three days from now, I guess, right? Yeah. So it'll be a long ride. So please continue to keep him in prayer so that the Lord will be able to help him and his lovely wife to reach safely. And uh, we do cherish this beautiful relationship, and I'm looking forward to go and spend time in Hood River one day. Okay, God bless. Thank you once again for being joined with us, and people are watching online. God be with you all. And we know that we are living in this very last days of time. Let's commit ourselves to the hands of Jesus, surrender our lives, and uh, hope for the best as possible in the future days to come. Any prayer requests, please do contact us. Anyone who needs any visitation, anything that we can be able to be a part of your family and yourself, we are always willing to do. Hope side is hope on your side. Thank Amen. you for being with us. Maranatha, Jesus is coming again. Amen. Amen.